Hello and welcome to Jim's Tabletop Wargaming. It's that time again folks. Today we're taking a look at the 10th edition Start Painting Kits. Specifically the Tyranid Painting Set to paint in the Leviathan Colour Scheme. This kit comes with three Termagants and a Ripper Swarm to build and paint. Models are all push fit, but will require some tools in order to remove them from the sprues and tidy them up. I won't be using any primers for this video as I'm limiting myself to just what's in the box. If you have access to primers, I recommend you use them to ensure the best quality end results. Specifically Wraithbone if you have it. The plan with this video is to see if I can paint a model better than suggested on the box art and really test the versatility of the included paints. Consider this partly a tutorial and partly a painting challenge I've set for myself and to anyone following along. Let's take a look at the box contents first. The instructions for assembly are printed on the back so we'll be keeping that close. We have the bases with the peg holes, uh, the larger one being for the Ripper Swarm, a synthetic starter brush, this will be the only brush used in this video, and the sprue with the unassembled models. And finally, six included paints, the names of which are on screen now. In order to release our alien fiends from their plastic prison, we will need a set of clippers and also a craft knife to tidy up the mold lines. Each part has a number next to it on the sprue, which corresponds to the number on the instructions for you to identify it. Start by carefully snipping the sprue connection points with the clippers. The flat edge should be facing the model and you should leave a small gap so that you are not flat up against the model. This will prevent any unwanted damage. Try to use the top of the clippers here for maximum control and gently apply pressure. Here we have the first part, but it can't exactly chow down on Space Marines in its current state. We need to remove the bits left over from the previous step using a craft knife. Hopefully you already have basic understanding of knife safety going into this video. Do remember not to apply too much pressure when cutting and keep your body parts out of the direction you are cutting. I am not really the best person to teach blade safety as I always end up cutting myself during these projects, so if you are not confident with a knife, you can always use a mold line tool instead. Once you are satisfied with the parts, you can begin assembling by pushing the parts together. Once again, being gentle not to bend or break by using excessive force. Now we have the legs assembled, we can whack it on the base here and it's ready to charge the foe. But a warrior is only as good as his weapon, and this one is quite literally armless. The best way to assemble the arms is to attach both at the same time as they slot into each other. Don't push them in fully until you have connected the arms at the gun. And there we are, one grey boy ready to blast the sucker with some disgusting burrowing beetle. Now in order to paint this horrifying abomination we need some water for our brush. Uh, I tend to use an old takeout container with some tap water. We also need something to wipe it on, I suggest kitchen roll. Uh, ideally something that doesn't leave a load of fibres behind when you use it. Since we don't have a primer in the box I'm going to cover the whole thing with Wraithbone to start with. If you do have primer now is the time to use that. As you can see the paints tend to separate so it does need a good shake before use. I cut the video for time but usually it's good to do this for about 20 seconds or so. Damp the brush before use and wipe the excess water onto the kitchen roll. We might as well use the included tray as a palette for this. So apply some paint to your brush. Avoid getting the paint in the base of the bristles. That little metal bit at the bottom of the brush as it will ruin it. Transfer the paint to your palette, thinned with water as needed. The paint should flow well from the brush and settle quite flat on the palette. If it looks lumpy, you will need to thin it down with water some more. Apply a thin coat all over the grey plastic of the model. Do not worry if you can still see the grey beneath. It will take about two coats to hide this and you need to let it dry in between. Do not be lazy and try and slap a bunch of paint on in one go. Keep it thin in order to keep the details of the model visible and evenly spread the paint around. Do not let it pool up in any areas. This is what it looks like after two thin coats of paint. This gives us a nice surface to work from now. Moving on to Nagaroth Knight, for the chitin areas such as the bits on the back, head, chest and legs. Once again, just do a few thin coats until the colour looks even. Here I'm carefully painting the underside of the edges too. Next we want to paint the gun chitin. 
claws and hooves with Thunderhawk Blue. Once you are happy with those previous steps, you should have something that looks like this. There are a few areas where I've gone over that will need touching up and correcting with Wraithbone before we continue. Now that all of the colours are good enough and corrections are done, it is time to use Majos Purple Contrast Paint to add a little shade to the model. For this I'm just applying the contrast all over the model and avoiding the rock details on the base. So every part we have just painted should have a light coat of this contrast paint applied in order to add some shade to the recesses and give a more biological look to the model. This is what it looks like once dried, and now we can go back in with the Wraithbone and thinly lay it on to bring back the light beige of the skin. Aim for the high points and avoid getting into any recesses. It can help to use the side of the brush for this. Avoid any areas you want to keep pink like the gun tubes. Now you can see the difference that made to the model and it is a lot closer to the box art now. But I want to make the layers of armor on his back really pop out. So for this I will be mixing Wraithbone and Nagaroth Knight to create a lighter purple to highlight just the first half of each panel. I'm wiping away some of the paint on a paper towel beforehand as to ensure a minimal amount of paint is being applied. Here you can see that this has made quite a significant difference to the overall quality of the model now. Next we can move on with the Corex white details such as the teeth. I'm just lightly touching the tops of each tooth with the side of the brush to avoid getting paint in the recesses. Now I've mixed up some Corex White and Thunderhawk Blue to create a highlight colour for the claws and weapon details. Just focus on the edges of each. And then we have some decent edge highlights to make the model stand out. Now to do the same for the base details such as this rock. Using Corex White and wiping the brush until only a little of paint remains. And dry brushing the rock. I'm using the same technique here to highlight all the armor panels, just on the edges to add one extra highlight to it. Now I'm using Majos Purple Contrast to blend the three colours together on the purple chitin panels. This is great for hiding some mistakes and leaves the white edge with a nice light purple hue. Next we have the technical paint for the base. This one you can't really shake so you take the handle end of your brush and give it a stir. Don't forget to wash your brush off afterwards. Liberally apply this directly to the base from the pot and wipe off any excess on the rim. I would also apply a little water to the hooves just to blend the colour in and remove any excess that sticks to them. This will take a little while to dry so come back to it later. Using the same dry brush technique, apply Wraithbone across the surface of the base lightly as to pick out the raised details. And since we don't have black paint available, finish off the rim of the base with just a few thin coats of Wraithbone. There you have it! Finish Leviathan Termagant, ready to devour mankind and rep the hive mind. I hope you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and let me know in the comments what your favourite Tyranid Hive fleet is. Have some good old paint and fun and I'll see you next time.